Tesla's five for one split last Monday. Um, it's just really caused volatility to either stay the same, maybe even go up a little. One split uh, did not calm the volatility, that's for sure. Shares have had a wild ride uh, over the past week and a half, including the worst day ever uh, when uh, the stock dropped 21 percent. That was Tuesday. Joining us now is Mark Fields, TPG Capital Senior Advisor, former CEO of Ford. You know, I'd ask you about the last week, Mark, but why Why just confine it to that? Just what do you make of the Tesla phenomenon over the past, I mean, why even go back six months? But let's stick with six months where we've just seen it just, just rocket to unbelievable levels. What do you make of that? Well, I think overall, I think what investors are doing is they're looking at electrification. They're looking at uh, all these products that are coming to market. And they're saying, listen, electrification is for real. It is going to be the dominant form of propulsion years out in the industry. And they're looking at Tesla and they're saying, hey, listen, they have a very compelling brand. Um, from a growth standpoint, it's, it's upside for them. They're, they built their plant in Beijing. They're finishing their plant. They're building their plant in Germany. Every new product they're introducing, whether it's the Cybertruck or their semi-truck, those are all incremental products. They're not replacing other products in their lineup. And I think they're also looking at two other things. They're looking at the competition. Yes, there's an onslaught of all these new models coming, but the software management that you have to master for electric vehicles is very difficult. And at the heart, Tesla is a software company, and you can see folks like VW that are introducing a, a model right now in Europe is having a lot of problems, and they're an excellent engineering company. And then finally, you know, the CO2 regulations, even during this COVID downturn, uh, no country, whether it's China or in Europe, they haven't backed off one inch on their CO2 uh, reduction targets. And that's going to go bode well for electrification to grow. And so I think a lot of investors are looking at that. You know, you got the other, you know, lots of millennials who are on Robinhood and other platforms and they're staying at home and they're saying, hey, this is, this is a little bit like fantasy football. I think that's a little bit driving it. Uh, but you're going to see a lot of volatility uh, over the next number of months for this company because they have proven, listen, that they can successfully raise money literally on the backs of their shareholders, but they've yet to prove that they can generate a, a decent return on capital. And that's hugely important in the automotive business. That's been the question all along. And, and there's a lot to unpack in, in what you just said, because obviously first the uh, it, first to market, they have a lot of advantages with the batteries, but, but you wonder, and with technology, that's what we talk about all the time when we have some of the old line car guys on that say, look, GM is, is on their tail. And then we say, well, you know, when it, you ask the question, is the technology comparable? Uh, and, and they kind of have to concede, no, Tesla is, you know, miles ahead. But then on the other hand, you know, it didn't get in the, the S&P at this point because those profits are they really profits if you factor out, uh, you know, regulatory and CO2 credits? And that's the return for investors that you're talking about. It's nice to raise money and they, it's, it puts them, you know, they have $5 billion more to, to develop things. But when do you actually see a, a return not dependent on regulatory or, or CO2 credits? You're, you're exactly right. When you look at uh, their business, they're selling these regulatory CO2 credits to the other OEMs uh, that need them. So in effect, the legacy or the traditional OEMs are actually subsidizing the Tesla business for the time being. Because if you look at their first half profits, on a gap basis, they uh, produced $220 million of, of profits. But during that time period, they sold $782 million of these regulatory credits, which are basically 100% margins. So they're making money on uh, the regulatory arbitrage as opposed to the basics of designing, manufacturing, marketing, and selling uh, vehicles. Okay. And they have to do that because this is, they have to reinvest in their existing products. They're building the new products. Uh, cash right, is super important.